If you're looking for a way to weave a rug like no one else has ever woven before, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to weave a rug that involves a pattern. Welcome to DIY in the house. If you are new to our channel, you have to check out our rug weaving playlist. We have uh, videos on how to weave a rug using blankets and twine and sheets and t-shirts. The sky is the limit. But today I am going to take it to a whole new cool level. We are going to use just regular cotton. I have cotton fabric, but I have red, white, and blue, so I'm going to make a patriotic rug. But what is super cool is it is in going to involve weaving in patterns. No more just weaving back and forth. Today I'm going to show you how to weave a rug in a checkerboard pattern and it turned out fantastic. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe so you know when we have other videos available. But we're going to get started and show you how to make a patriotic woven rug. For this project, I am going to use the same loom that I used to do the table runner uh, when I used string. I love the size of that. It's approximately 13 inches by 30. So I'm going to use that loom, but this time I'm going to use fabric to weave a table runner that is patriotic. So I have my loom. If you need uh, information on how to make the loom, check out the video Ross put together on how to make this and the link is down below. But we are going to warp this uh, loom with white and then I am going to do a pattern with red um, and blue. We need a yard and a half of the white cut into inch and a half strips. So a yard and a half of this for the warp. For the weaving, we need to have a half of a yard of um, each color, plus I'm going to have it constant that there's always white being woven in with the other, so we need a yard more of the white. To prepare the fabric to weave, I like having it roughly an inch and a half strips. Do not worry if it's a little more or a little less, but uh, roughly an inch and a half. Since I have my sewing room clean, probably for one of the few times that that happens, I'm going to go ahead and cut these at the cutting table with a rotary cutter and a ruler but you can also simply just rip these. So uh, with your scissors, just roughly uh, do a snip at an inch and a half and you can rip your strips that way. So uh, using my rotary cutter, I am just going to cut an inch and a half strips and this um, remnant was about three quarters of a yard. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the entire piece of fabric when it comes time to joining your fabric, you want to have a continuous ball of your warp. And so to make that happen, you just take two pieces of fabric and lay them on top of each other with their short ends lining up roughly. Fold it over about three quarters of an inch and give a small half inch snip there. So right now you have two pieces of fabric with a snip in each one. Now you lay that fabric end for end lining up the snip and put through the fabric in, uh, from one strand. Now you have a knot and a knot is fine uh, when you're doing rag rugs so you'll just have a little bit of tail there which is uh, just fine. So continuously attach your warp but do not continuously attach all of your colors because you're going to want those in short increments. I have each of the colors cut into approximately inch and a half strips. Again, um, some are big, some are little, but roughly in the area of an inch and a half. And so these are not connected end to end. I just keep them in a pile. Uh, typically I um, make a little gift bag and sit it by my chair when I'm weaving of each color or a basket. So these are not end to end because you want 
them to be in a manageable length when you weave back and forth. The one that I do have in a continuous ball is the one that I'm going to use for the warping. The warp fabric is the fabric that goes uh, the long way on your loom back and forth on each nail. So to start, you tie a knot in one end, to making like a three or four inch loop. So I'm just going to tie a knot here. And make that nice and tight and I'm going to start and put that over the first nail and come down to this end and this is going to need to be nice and tight and so I'll just do a few of these and then I'll finish it up and you finish it up with a knot on the the last one just as you began with make a knot that has a three or four inch loop but weave this back and forth. You want to calculate uh, how much warp you need and make it continuous. So I just did the math and calculated that I needed to have 50 passes back and forth and made my ball accordingly. As you can see, the warp is all done. I have a knot uh, here that created a loop. So I had started on the far corner and ended here. What I am going to do on this uh, table runner, which it also could be a rug, uh, depending on uh, what size loom you're using or your uh, purpose for this project, but I wanted to make a patriotic table runner. What I have as my plan, I have tape marks here on top um, to divide. I'm dividing my nails in approximately thirds. So the purpose of these sections is I'm going to make a checkerboard. So this section is going to be wove with red and white. This section is going to be wove with blue and white. And then this one will be red and white. And then we'll alternate in a checkerboard all the way down. To start the row, you're going to want to join a red and a white together. So we're going to do the same manner as you did for your warp. Put a snip in them, lay them length uh, ways, uh, end for end there and draw through a tail and now you're ready to start with a red and a white join together. When I'm weaving there is always going to be white fabric. The thing that is going to be changing is your red, your blue, your red. So we're going to always keep white but we'll be changing out this other color. Okay, so I just uh, set up a partial loom here so you can see how to start. You're gonna want your rod there and you're going to want to feed the fabric under the rod. I can grab it, there we go. And you are between the warp at this point. So all of your weaving on this first row is going to be going under the nail and so we have uh, the knot is going to be on the edge which is fine I might pull it in just a little bit but this is how you start your red is coming up uh, underneath the nail and so your white has to go back down in that same spot so now under the next warp your white comes up and your red goes down and so in a little bit, I'll show you how you get a nice rhythm going, but I, this is kind of a crucial point that you want to see how this happens. So now your red has come up and your white goes down. So let me tighten that up. So you can see the pattern that we have started. Now your red is in the back and it needs to come from the back to the front in your next opening below the nail and now your white will go down that same hole. While your fingers are in the back just push that back uh, string through your next hole and this is something that I picked up on after I have made several of these your lead hand so going this direction it's my right hand going this direction it's my left hand so your lead hand is going to pull up the fabric out of the way and your next hand will push in your uh, red and bring out the hole of your next one 
and so it goes to the sky. So you're bringing up, your lead hand is bringing up the fabric out of the way so that you can push your next one down and back up. And so when that happens, then your, your lead hand drops your fabric and I'm now bringing this one to the sky. And the reason that's important, because we are using contrasting fabric, you want to have a defined angle on your stitches. And this really makes a nice twisting pattern. So this one's to the sky, this one goes to the back and comes forward. I have now dropped that, and now that one goes to the sky. I push this one to the back, bring it forward on the next hole, drop that out of the way, and now we are to the sky on this one. Now we've made it to this nail where my tape is indicating and that's where I want to switch to blue. And I have told you how you join fabrics together by making the snip and putting them end to end and making a knot. Well, I did not want a whole row of knots down each side as I was joining these and changing colors. So we are going to leave the red and not cut it to start the blue, and this blue has a right and a wrong side, so when I'm weaving, I need to make sure I fold it so that the nice pretty blue is out. So on this one, red is supposed to go in. Instead, blue is gonna go in and come out the next hole, but I'm gonna pull it all the way through and leave a four inch tail there. So this is gonna be a little awkward to start with, but just leave the tail, don't pull it tight yet. And so the blue came out, it goes to the sky, the white goes around, and now you keep weaving just as normal. The white's up, the blue goes to the back and comes through the next hole and goes up so the white can go through and it goes up and the blue goes through until we get to this next mark of the, the um, tape. So that goes up, this goes back. Now I've came to the where I have to change colors and the blue, one, let's see, two, four, six, eight. So the blue needs to go through one more and come out. Now we're switching to red and so white goes to the back and comes forward. Blue was supposed to go in, now we're going to have red go in instead, come out the next hole going to leave a tail just like I did over here and this is a tail that we're going to hide later but so now we're going to weave the same way but just not pull your red because it's not secured to anything so the white goes to the ceiling the red goes up the white goes up we're almost to the end and I had changed the camera angle so that we could see this and I'm gonna go really slow so that um, you can understand. So now we have blue and we have our white. I'm gonna, um, or I'm sorry, we have our blue and we have our red. And I'm gonna go ahead, hold this side and pull it. Pull your white. Okay, so now I am ready to have red go to the back and red comes up our next hole right here. White is in the front and it goes to the back. When it goes to the back, bring it out around your rod. So now we have a white and a red on each side of the rod. The white comes around forward to the rod and goes back in that very first hole and comes up just as we had before. The, the red, it goes around the back and comes forward through that same hole. Let me straighten those out a little bit there. So now the red goes to the back and comes forward. Now you're staying in your same. You have two warp strings between your weaving. And so now you don't have to say, oh, am I below the nail? You're just in your same pattern. And this is white and then red. There's red and now white. And that's how you'll know, oh shoot, did I miss a spot or am I off on my rhythm? So red to the ceiling, 
Now it's my lead hand is left. So white to the ceiling and red to the ceiling and you start seeing the alternating pattern. And we're going to go over until we have to do our color change which is right here. I'm going to pull both of those tight, push them up. So now the red needs to go to the back so that the blue can continue to weave. I'm going to ignore this. It's going to get caught in my weaving as I go. So um, keep the, your tail, hide it in this tunnel. And so my white, let me get that blue out of there. So I'm doing red and my white has to come up just like it has. Now my red is going to hang here and blue gets to come back to the party. So now we're going to take blue and we're going to keep going. And you'll know if you're correct if it's blue and then white, white and then blue. So we're going to keep going over till we have to do the color change of the red and blue. White is always your constant. There is going to be a little bit of a difference in your pattern at the beginning and the end of your checkerboard. But when I went through this, it was enough of a uh, cool pattern that, that didn't, um, it didn't affect the overall look. So don't stress about the, the color change area. So now we're going to go back to um, doing red. So you're going to continue the blue until it comes up in the red spot. Okay, I switched camera angles so that you could see this side. The blue and the red are now in the same hole. And so now the blue, it, it stays and, and uh, waits for the next turn and we pick up the red. We hide the tail in our weaving. So now the white has to go to the back and come forward. And the red comes back and goes forward. Okay, I'm down here to the rod. The purpose of the rod is to keep your, your project nice and straight. So you always have to weave around the end. So before I do that, I give both fabrics a pull. And we ha are now, the white has come forward. So the red has to go back and around the rod. So now you have the red on the back and the white on the front. So the white goes to the back, comes up that first hole. The red goes to the back, comes up the same hole to make sure that we are keeping our checkerboard pattern that way. And I am on the right rhythm because it's going red, white, red, white. And my white is starting to get a little short here because remember it's always going to have white all the way through your pattern. So I'm going to have to join a white fabric. I am continuing until the, the blue and the red were in the same hole, which they are now. And so the red goes away and I start with the blue again and I'm going to just encase this tail in there and continue weaving. The red and blue are now in the same hole, so the blue goes out of the way, and we continue weaving with the red and encase the, the tail in your weaving. So now we have to go red back, and there we go. I had my hands backwards. There we are. And my white forward here, and the red back. Again, always checking my pattern, red, white, red. Okay, so I'm going to pull my white, pull my red, push it up. And I have a white on one side, a red on the other. The white comes forward, the red goes back, comes in that hole. The white comes forward and goes back, and we continue. I have wove down to my first estimated mark. So this is what it looks like right now. We have our blues, reds on the side. 
Now I want to switch to blue on the side and red in the center. To make that happen on the end, I'm going to go back to the traditional way of joining these because it's going to be on the end. I need to make sure it's nice and tight. So I'm going to uh, cut the red there and it will have a little red coming in on the weaving. I'm going to go a little bit shorter. There we go. And just join my fabric here. So the white's going to come around and now our color goes to the back coming through this hole and now we continue the same rhythm making sure my blue is folded to the outside. Okay so we have the blue up and this is our tail and the blue came out the hole so we need red to come out that same hole and now here is the tail that's going to get hidden there so we have to be nice and loose because that's not attached to anything going to hide my blue while I'm weaving and go over and making sure we still have the rhythm here and I'm going to go a couple and then check it yeah okay so now we can look to see we have color white color so we're good so that's how you'll know um, if you have joined it correctly so now this blue tail is going to get hidden in that weaving and this red tail will get hidden in this weaving and as you can see you cannot hardly tell where the other tails were uh, hidden in there so going to continue over I can't believe how fast this project went I am already to the last row and on the last row we are down to the raw just as we always have been one fabric on each side the last row is a little different where when you weave back you are now going to weave underneath each nail and that way it's going to lock your stitches in so they won't slide off your warp uh, so weave under each nail just like you did on the very first row I'm you do need a small crochet hook the blue needs to come forward and go back so I have put the crochet hook underneath that warp and I am going to draw my blue to the back now the white it has to go around and come back through that same warp that I just did on the uh, blue so I'm gonna pull this the white to the back of the rug so I'm just back here behind going to stick my crochet hook that same place that I did the blue and I'm gonna draw forward the white now the blue needs to come forward and the white needs to go back so you just keep this rhythm now the white needs to come forward and the blue so you just keep going back and forth with your color palette that you've been working on and when I get to the end I will show you how we finish this off and take it off of the loom I have finished the last uh, weaving going in between the warp I have one fabric on each side of the rod just as we've done on each row when you get to the end you need to go back just a couple stitches to lock in uh, what you've done sort of like back stitching and sewing so I am going to try it is a little tight there we go I'm going to pull um, the white back so I'm just going to do this for two stitches back so that I can just tie a nice tight knot and going to then just slip these through the weaving the tail uh, from where I did my color changes just gonna uh, weave those down and back and trim them off and when I turn back on the camera we'll pull it off of the loom okay I lied I did not weave these back in yet this is so nice and tight I was having a a tough time fighting these to get them in so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the rods and then I will uh, put those back in but I wanted you guys to see the reveal so you just slip out your rods on the side and 
just pull off. This is the end that we finished on, and there's just about, oh, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch there. When we get this off, we will be able to pull the weaving down to that, and you won't even see your warp anymore. And it is off. Oh my gosh, that looks super cool. Nice straight edge. It is really tight. Oh, it looks really good. So this is the beginning end. And I'm just going to use my fingernails. Sorry for the squeaky table. Every time I move it, my cutting table is squeaking. And I'll turn it around this side. And these are the ends that I'm going to weave back in. So this is a red and oh yeah much easier I can get my crochet hook in with no trouble and I'm just gonna pull that through I have my tails all woven in this is the side that was facing you when you were, were weaving and so you can see the distinct uh, division in the colors but when you turn it over look at it is almost like a, a Thing of beauty it just works really really well this is a table runner but if you're going to use it as a rug if you're going to make a loom that's bigger and remember that we have a video on how to make the loom if you're going to make a bigger one you're going to want to put backing on it um, I have uh, used the backing of the easy liner on many of the rugs you just cut it inside um, the the dimensions of your rug and hand stitch it on with needle and thread and it wor works really well uh, you can check out um, i show that in most of the other uh, rug videos but since this is a table runner i'm not going to put a backing on it i am just going to put it out uh, to enjoy on our table